All right, hello, and welcome back to my 2.5D RPG in Unity tutorial. Today, we are going to be doing a world map. So, you can see here that we have like a representation of a world map, I guess. And we can see that as we navigate it with these before buttons here, we can see that the name changes from Wasteland to like whatever we're near. So, in this case, the Plague Desert, go back to Wasteland. And if we get near to the Dead City, it changes to Dead Sea. So, if we fast travel to there, We'll see that it becomes the Dead City now. And if we change to the local map, it'll draw the Dead City map. And if we go to the global map, we can travel back to Plague Desert. And that will then switch over the local map to redraw the uh, Plague Desert. And that's all fun. So, yeah. Uh, oh, just one quick. Uh, Thing uh, some people will have brought up that it's not technically 2.5D, and they're technically right, but it kind of doesn't really fit into. But 2.5D is probably the closest because isometric requires it to be at like a 45 degree angle, you know, like the original fallouts are. So I'm, I'm and it's not quite 2D because it's not like you know a side scroller or a platformer or something. So I figured this would be the closest name that would be the right one. But yeah. Uh, anyway, let's get on to how I did this. Okay, so first up, we just have a quick uh, fix in the serialization controller, where we've added a check for if on when the level's finished loading, so in the unfinished loading uh, method, we check if a directory exists for all the uh, save game data we writ with the serialization controller. So and if so, basically, if a folder doesn't exist in the save directory with the current scene's name, it'll just call directory create. And that will create all the necessary text files that we use to store data, just so we actually have somewhere to write to, and it doesn't throw an error because without it, it sort of does, and that is very bad. Okay, so another change I've made in the pass in IDs of the objective kill someone is basically just to check to see if the IDs passed in is null, and if it is, we just use the original target ID that was set in the uh, in the what's it called the script so it was the one that was initialized within the inspector rather than the one that was loaded in from uh, how we serialized the quest so just in case it's null or it's blank we just use the original id otherwise we use the passed in id to get a target and that just helps us make sure that it doesn't get the wrong object which it would do because if you pass in an empty string and you use dot contains on like a list of ids it'll just pick the first one because technically an ID contains a null. It's weird how it works. But yeah, that's what happened. So that's why we've got that check. And if you had like other objectives with required IDs, you'd have to do the same thing. But since we've only got the one at the moment, then we should be fine. So yeah. Okay, so now we get into the meat of it and I'm just trying to load up a sprite so I can show you the actual uh, map texture. With it, but basically, uh, we've got a new texture 2D for the world map, which is basically just a world. And relating to this is on the, uh, where is it? Fast travel location. We've got a new vector 2 int called my map coordinates. Uh, these are basically going to be the pixel coordinates that a particular location will have in the, uh, oh, well, on the map that you've drawn. So, yeah. Uh, we've also got a new drop down for the, well, set the drop down for the map type selector. And we've got a new vector 2 int called to sample from world. Uh, which is basically just the uh, actual coordinates that the uh, in the basically when we've got the map view open, these are like the uh, this is the center point of the map uh, or of the of the viewpoint. So it'll draw say like a hundred by a hundred window from that around that point. And the public fast travel location nearest location is basically we're just getting the uh, nearest location. With these new uh, pixel coordinates I had uh, hit my map coordinates, so there uh, and, and then we got a display for the fast travel info. Okay, so first up on start, uh, we basically just added if last level is not equal to C manager because that got active name, then it just finds tower maps and generates the map. Uh, this is basically just to make sure that on the level starting that it's correct, and likewise. 
we have two new instances of this in the update, or, and one new instance, sorry, because this one was already here. Uh, new one in the uh, void update in this new if statement. So what this if statement does is we look at the map type decider, which is, uh, where is it? Map container. It's basically this uh, this one here, this drop down here, which decides what type of map we want to draw. So whether the global map or the uh... actually we can get rid of one of them, can't we? Yeah, we can get rid of that one because we don't have the NPC map. Uh, it just basically is a drop down deciding whether we have the local map or global map. And if this value returns zero, then we're looking at the world the world map. So we call get sample of map which basically grabs us a hundred by a hundred uh, pixels. It gives us a hundred square pixels of the uh, map we passed in. So since a sprite doesn't want to load, I will have to find another way to load it uh, to show you. Uh, where's the map? Sorry, the train's going to go past. Here we go. Uh, field finder. Open with. Firefox, apparently. Okay, so yeah. So apparently we went open this from Firefox, but yeah. You get the idea. So basically we've got the plague desert here. We've got the density here, and just a load of empty blank area that I'll probably do something with eventually. But yeah. So, what do we do with this shit? Uh, basically it just grabs... Uh, declares a new colour array called map sample. Uh, it's 100 by 100. And then we cycle through from int x equals to sample from world dot x, and while x is less than to sample from world dot x dot plus one hundred, and does the same for y. It will call uh, set the uh, map. It will grab the pixel from x and y in the uh, map texture in the world map texture, and use x minus two sample from world dot x and y dot minus two sample from world dot y to set the map sample color array. Uh, so that'll basically just set the color to be the color from the world map. But we do uh, like y minus two sample from world.y to make it a value between zero and 100 so we can use it as an index in the array. Uh, okay. Next, uh, we call text, uh, create a new text to 2D. Again, it's 100 by 100. Um, just use text to format RGBA32 and just called false for mitmaps. And we set the filter mode to point so it all appears all nice and pixel arty. And then we basically just go through x, int x equals 0 to 100 and y equals 0 to 100. And we call text.setPixel x, y, and we use these like, x and y again to get the color out of the map sample array. And then we apply the texture and we set the display to be equal to texture. Uh, that's pretty much it for that. Just basically grabs us a sample of the map that we want to view. Uh, next up, we try and find the nearest location on our screen. So if we go to declaration, what this does is it finds the center of our viewpoint. So that'll be a two sample from world plus 50 by 50, because we've got a uh, 50 and 50, because we've got a uh, it's 100 by 100, so the center point will be 50, 50. And uh, fast travel location nearest is null. And it's because this is basically just going to be the nearest one to our coordinates. And the distance is 99999, just so that pretty much guaranteed to have a lower value than that. Uh, what we do is we go through each fast travel location in the player level transition data store dot me dot locations. Uh, we convert the map coordinates to be equal to work in Unity's coordinates because basically, uh, all right, I'll show you. Uh, basically, on the uh, on like an image, like in an image editor, like in a sprite or GIMP or whatever. Uh, this corner here is zero zero, whereas when we're in Unity, uh, this corner here is zero zero. So basically, what we're doing here is by 
making the y the world map dot height minus my map coordinates dot y we're sort of flipping it over so the world map coordinates match up to how unity views it if you sort of get it so yeah that's why we do that and then we get the distance between the center point of the uh, map that we're viewing at the moment and the converted location and if d is less than distance or the current distance then we set distance equal to d and nearest and equal to the fast travel location that we were cycling through. Now, if distance is more than 10, we return null because saying, all right, it might be the closest location, but it's still too far. So we're just going to return null. Otherwise, if it is less than 10, we return nearest. And that is how we decide what location to uh, display. Uh, and likewise, if the nearest location is null, we just display wasteland and decide uh, plus to sample from world plus new vector in. Basically, this just prints the coordinates of the uh, cursor or the view. And if it's not equal to null, likewise, we just print the coordinates as well as the uh, as well as the name of the scene that will be loaded if we fast travel to that location. And likewise, we also do a check if last level load is not equal to scene dot get active scene dot name. We find the power maps and we generate the map base and we set the last level loaded to be the active scene. Uh, this is basically just to make sure that all the power maps and shit are correct, even if we've not got the uh, actual local map open. Okay, there was one more thing. Uh, yes, the movement and actual fast travel. Well, actually, no, I'm not to find out. Yeah, I did find time maps last time. So, uh, what we do here is basically we've got four methods: map up, map down, map right, and map left, which uh, map to these four buttons here, as you can see. So, map up, map right, map down, map left, and these basically just check if the uh, if performing this movement, so adding five to whatever the coordinates are, won't take it out of bounds. So either moving it, uh, like making it so it displays part of an area that's not on the map, then it will then move the uh, map display like five pixels in the appropriate direction. So for example, in the map up, we check in if to sample from world.y plus 100 is less than the world map dot height, then we add uh, to sample from world.x and well, we add nothing to the x value and we add five for the y value using this uh, new vector to int. But if say we were, if say this uh, two sample from world.y plus 100 was more than the uh, 300 by 300 pixel uh, map that we currently have, then it wouldn't do the map up because it'd say, all right, this is going to take us out of range. So we don't want to do that. And um, likewise, uh, that's all good. Where's the fast travel? Method. Uh, yes, fast travel to location. So this is bound to uh, the button here. Uh, and what this does is if nearest location is not equal to null and nearest location is not equal to the current location, because if we're already at a location, we won't need to fast travel to it, then we don't do anything. But if we're not at the location and it's not null, then we basically just use the player level transition data store dot me dot set level transition to, and it will send us to the location that was uh, there, basically. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, so again, I'll just quickly demo it. So go on map, go global map. We can just move around with these buttons here. You can see that it'll change based on where we are, so we can see that we're near the Blake Desert. You could add some fancy GUI, like a marker for where the center of the thing is, or like icons for things or whatever. You know, that's your call. It's not too hard. Just draw a texture at these particular coordinates, and yeah. And we can see that if we click fast travel, it takes us to the settlement. And likewise, if we go all the way back, we can fast travel back to the Blake Desert. So yeah, that was creating a world map. 
so yeah, uh, cheers for watching that. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. Uh, go check out Loud or Quiet, which is a game I made, and it's on Steam, and it's really good, trust me. So yeah, uh, also, yeah, that's pretty much it. Check out all the other shit in the description. I might start a Patreon or something to support me doing this, because I need money for food and surviving and stuff. Because this, I don't have a job yet. I'm trying this whole indie game thing until I run out of money. And then, you know, I write a CV and job. I get a job and all that stuff. Well, I've got a degree, so that should be working all right. So, yeah. Uh, so, if you'd, like, be interested in, like, say, if I opened a Patreon and then, like, I don't know, I had to load the uh, files every week rather than just when it was completed and give you guys a chance to ask me questions or some shit if you really care about that kind of thing stuff. And just like tell us in the comments or something. Yeah. So cheers for watching and goodbye.